Oh, hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Turner's YouTube channel. Um, got some really big news. First of all, today we're doing World War II, so everybody's favorite war. And we actually are so popular, we have so many hits, we have a sponsor. That's right, Kreiderman's in Cocoa and Melbourne. They have the best brisket on the Space Coast. Their brisket is amazing. They also have pulled pork, turkey is one of my favorites, and all the sides you can eat if you're willing to pay for them. This is clearly a joke. They didn't actually sponsor us, but they really do have great food, and they do a lot of great things for the community. So um, if you get a chance, check them out. We're going we're gonna to get to this in a second. All right, before we do anything else, um, you're going to need to probably going to have to pause this a couple hundred times, more times than I've tried to get this right. You're going to go ahead and open up your World War II notes. Um, you're going to follow along as we go. You have two assignments to do. The first one is, I don't know if it's going to work, if it fails, it fails, whatever, we'll worry about that later. Um, using the A plus B plus C equals conclusion, or the inverse conclusion equals A plus B plus C, write a thesis statement about the start of World War II. That's assignment or question number one. Question number two, in one, at least one well-written paragraph, please don't give me junk because you're not going to score well needs to be a, probably at least six sentences. This is kind of a, a, a Galileo paragraph, not a non-Galileo paragraph. Um, I want you to tell me how, and I lost the computer, oh well. I want you to tell me how um, World War I and World War II were the same, very similar in their starts. All right, let's get to it. All right, um, why did World War II start? You've heard this story before. Number one is what we talked about a little bit a little bit last time, and that is nationalism. Nationalism, the Germans believed that they were superior, and again, Adolf Hitler was all about the superiority. He, you guys know this from what you've read, what you've heard, what you've understood. Uh, it's not real comfortable to talk about. The anti-Semitism plays into this. This is the really ugly form of nationalism. It is very different than the nationalism that was in World War One, where you had small groups of people who were trying to stay together and not being taken over by bigger countries. This nationalism is the opposite. It's, it's the really, really, really ugly form of nationalism where people are superior to other people and um, all of those grotesque things. Um, the next thing is militarism. And what I didn't talk about before is, is that Germany begins um, building, building up their army in 1935 against the Treaty of Versailles. And again, the Treaty of Versailles we've talked about, it didn't really work that well, it was kind of a bust. So um, take that for what it was. But again, in 1935, Germany goes against the Treaty of Versailles and they start building up the military. All right. Now, I'm sorry, this is not going to be perfect, but um, this stupid thing keeps popping up. This is a map of Europe. And in the map of Europe, you can see that um, this little area of the world right here is Germany. And I know that this stupid title keeps coming up. You, I want you to watch Germany because it's important. It's important to understand how much Germany changes over time. So we're just going to start right here in about 1500 and you can see this little middle of the country right here isn't real populated and all of these small tiny little spaces those are Germanic tribes so all of these tribes are slightly different but they end up coming together right around 1900 and becoming what we know as Germany today so I will go ahead and link this in in, in with the rest of the links so you can watch it for yourself. A lot of people like to watch it more than once because they think it's interesting. But now look at it. You can see in around 1500, all of these tiny tribes are all separated. They're all their own little group of people. They're not Germany. And if you watch this little area right here that's Prussia, you'll notice that Prussia starts getting really powerful, especially right around the time where the United States becomes a country in 1780-ish. 
1770 ish. You hear the microwave, that's my wife making lunch. Alright, you see how Prussia is becoming really powerful, but you still see all these tiny little little islands here. Those are that's the Germanic tribes. See eighteen hundred. Prussia is really powerful. Teaching German history would not be fun. Nineteen hundred. So now we're into World War One. Watch it expand. World War Two. Here comes Hitler. Here he goes. Look at that. And now we're. This is the Cold War. You can see the line, the Iron Curtain, West Germany, East Germany. And now we're into more modern, modern day Europe. So again. 1811, 1909, 1944. This is kind of as far as Hitler makes it by taking over Europe. You guys get the picture. Look at that. That's about how much he took. He was all the way in France. He had pushed all the way east into the Soviet Union. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with the notes. So you should have your notes out if you haven't started those already. Go ahead and follow along. It should match up. If it doesn't, you can make it work. You're smart. Um, how did World War I begin? Very much the same way that World War II began. They call it World War II for the same reason. They call it Home Alone II because it's very similar. The people change, the times change, the technology changes, but it starts for a lot of the same reasons. People don't like it when other people come into their country and take their things. And that's exactly what happens after they form alliances. Where have I heard that one? Totally heard that one before. This is a hint, just like the other no cards were a hint. All right. Um, Axis powers form Italy, Germany, and Japan. Those are the bad guys. The USA, England, France, and the Soviet Union are the good guys. Now, in 1935, Hitler's building up his territory, and he militarizes the Rhineland. And you remember that map? This little area that is Belgium slash France is called the Rhineland. It was once part of Germany. Germ Hitler says, hey, that was once part of Germany. Guess what? It's going to be part of Germany again. So he goes in there, and he puts his military right there in that little tiny yellow spot. That's in 1935. What happens is, is that the world community rolls over. They say, okay, well you can have that, but don't take anything else. So what does he do? He takes something else, and that is the Sudetenland, which is right here. That little area right between Czechoslovakia and Germany, once part of Germany. Hitler says that was once part of Germany, it's going to be part of Germany again. You've heard this one before too taking over land that doesn't belong to you. Sounds very familiar. You guys should be able to smoke this test. I mean, by smoke it, I mean do really well on that, that area that you know what I'm talking about, I quit. All right, the last thing that happens, well, not the last thing. In 18, 1938, Hitler takes over Austria, and he's Austrian. He wasn't actually German. And he just walks in and he goes, hey, Austria, <laughs> You're mine now. And Austria is like, okay. And again, the world community is just rolls over. And they roll over because they don't – they roll over because they don't want war. You have to understand where this generation of people – the people who are leading during World War II are the same people who are fighting during World War I – and they don't want it. They don't want their kids to see it. They don't want their grandchildren to see it. They don't want the their lives, this small generation of people who were born in 1880 and lived through World War One, World War Two. They their whole adult lives, 19 between 1880 and 1900, were full of war. They they're 
defined by World War One and World War Two. So coming out, they lived through World War One, they lived through the Great Depression, and now all of a sudden, Hitler's taking over the world. They don't want any part of it, and it's completely understandable why they would like that. This is called appeasement, and appeasement is done by Neville Chamberlain. He is in charge of Great Britain. He is the prime minister, and he brokers a deal with Hitler. And he basically tells Hitler, you could have the areas that you've taken, but if you take any more, we're going to have trouble. So what happens when Hitler takes more? They let him have it. Um, Neville Chamberlain is known as the great appeaser. And if you really want to get into these deep questions about should we be involved in other conflicts, there's a lot of really good points that are being made, but the biggest counterpoint is, is is that Neville Chamberlain, at some point, somebody has to stop Hitler, and it's going to take war to stop him. All right. Um, these are just jokes. Pause them because I'm kind of ready to be done. In 1939, Hitler moves to take over the rest of Czechoslovakia, and when he does this, Great Britain and France have enough, and they declare war on Germany. This is the beginning of World War II. He also invades Poland um, and takes over Poland as well. So the United States, at this point, starts ramping up war production, and they start selling weapons or giving weapons to France and Great Britain. This also gives us an excuse to start making our own weapons. All right. That's it for today. I will see you guys next week. Go ahead and get that done and turned in. It is due a week from today. Y'all have a great day.